Hey everyone, welcome back to another Brigandine video here. This is going to be a Kingdom Cast video uh, focusing on Norzalio, the Norzalio Kingdom, for the game Brigandine Legend of Renarzia. So let's start up this today. We're going to go over the whole cast. I'm going to make uh, separate videos for each kingdom and all that. So you get to see that um, on different videos. I won't include it all in one. But I wanted to go over this today and I wanted to talk about this because this is pretty exciting that uh, new information is finally coming out as far as some of the storyline goes, as far as the kingdom and, you know, what they do and all that. So let's go ahead and let's talk about this. Uh, you could find this on this uh, website up here, which I'll have all the links and everything listed down below if you want to check it out. Uh, and another thank you to the new developers of the Burgundine Legend of Narmacia game. I'm very happy that this is finally coming to fruition. It's been 20 years, <laughs> quite literally, uh, since Grand Edition. So, um, yeah, let's go ahead and let's talk about this. So, Norzalio Kingdom, what does that remind you of? Does it remind you of Norgard? Well, maybe a little bit. My impression might be something like a little bit of Norgard, a little bit of Neomechia. Uh, you can let me know your take on this, but let's go ahead and let's talk about this here. So what is this exactly? All right, so the Norzalio Kingdom has this flag and this little um, icon here for the flag. So they're the Blue Kingdom. They'll probably be blue in the game. And what is it about? The kingdom? All right, so let's read this here. Uh, the kingdom is on a large island northwest of the continent. So it's on an island by itself northwest of the continent of Runerzia. So, all right, so it is established by the hero Odessa, donning the Brigandine of Justice. The nation likewise values justice and hard work. The kingdom's textile spinning technology boosted its strength until it was on equal standing with major countries of the mainland. The kingdom has been in conflict with the Holy Gustava Empire ever since the Gustava incident. So, it's um, it's pretty much has a textile spinning technology that, um, you know, increases its um, strength as far as like a, a monetary thing, I believe. Um, maybe something else, but... Anyway, so this is an interesting thing. Let's. Uh, I just want to talk about this before we get into Rub Rubino, the leader of this country here. So it was established by the hero, Odessa, donning the brigandine of justice. Okay, so there was a hero called Odessa, and she equipped a brigandine of justice, which the brigandines in this, I believe, are books, which makes sense according to the uh, original brigandine game, which the original brigandine game was basically uh, it becomes a story as you beat it and as you beat the game it says at the very end it was sung uh, in the the song of the burgundine which basically became a story or a song to pass down throughout the generations. so there are stories here that they equip that give them power so this hero dessa equipped the burgundy of justice so rosalio is probably going to have that. So let's go on here. Let's talk about the leader here. Rubino. Character voice. Soma Seato. So that is the character voice for that. For the uh, Japanese character voice. I don't know if they're going to do English character voices. If you do, let me know. I'd love to have uh, a role. I'd love to do it. I really would. I think it'd be really cool to have some kind of role here. Um, I kind of have a more deeper scruffier voice so if there's something for that I, I probably would like to do that but anyways um <laughs> <I'm> just <laughs> cross your fingers <laughs> hopefully maybe but anyways here let's go on let's talk about this um heir to the throne of the norzalio kingdom clad in the brigandine of justice instructed in combat by general grados since a young age this talented young man is also fond of the arts and excels in both. Sensitive to others and kind at heart, he is well-loved by the people. At the same time, 
He possesses the strength of character to do what is right when need be. His father, Rubino III's death, and the invasion of the Holy Gustava Empire has brought conflict to the Norzalio kingdom. Now Rubino steps onto the battlefield, determined to suppress the flames of war in the name of justice. So that's Rubino. He is 17 years old. He's a prince. And uh, yeah, so that's that's him. He's the leader. And this is his storyline here. So Holy Gustava Empire and Norzalio are not very friendly towards each other when you start the game. So don't expect an alliance with them. I would just say that right off the bat. Um, let's click on some other characters here. Let's let's see what the whole list and lineup is about. So we just heard about uh, General Grados. Grados is right here. Let's click on him. Let's see what this is all about. Okay, Grados. Character voice, Kenta Miyake. All right, he's male. He's 55. He's a paladin. Cool. That's pretty cool. So... All right, so he's going to be like the Cavalier class. He's, you know, I, I know it says Paladin, but Cavalier and Knight class, it just depends on the translation, really. But it's basically a tank that can heal themselves or heal others. It's kind of like how Final Fantasy does things, too. It's not very much different. So just expect a basic tanky kind of character here. All right, so as general of the Norzalio Kingdom... <laughs> The hero is fiercely loyal to the royal family and has proven his bravery by defending his country through many battles. As Prince Rubino's military and literally arts teacher, the young prince looks up to him as a father, particularly now after King Rubino III's death. His only weakness is his uncontrollable sneezing whenever he catches sight of a beautiful woman. Having devoted his entire life to the royal family and the battlefield, he is known for his guileless personality, although that may have uh, that may also have contributed to his lifelong singleness. Wow. This guy's kind of lonely. Now, I sneeze when I, you know, hit the sun when I'm walking outside, but apparently some people sneeze when they see beautiful women, so I don't know if I'm attracted to the sun or if there's something different that's happening, I don't understand. Anyways, um, that's his story right there. But um, yeah, so he is a tank. He's a paladin tank. He's going to be, if he's a paladin class, according to normal Burgundian standards, he's going to be good. He's going to be good right off the bat. He's going to be very tanky. It's going to be kind of like kind of like playing a Gwingolin class. Gwingolin is the closest to being Paladin. Um, I know there's Dinadan too. Dinadan sort of turned into a specialized knight, which he was the Blade Master. So, I mean, Grados could possibly be the Blade Master of this game. I guess we'll find out. I guess we'll see. There are more characters to uncover. But if I was to say... Mm, the way that uh, they kind of wrote him in the, the story here, it seems to be like he's going to be more of a Gwingulin kind of character because Gwingulin was the advisor to Vinard and, uh, you know, he's really close to him. Uh, here, this says, as Prince Urbino's military and literary arts teacher, the young prince looks up to him as a father. So it's sort of like um, big brother kind of father like mentor mentoring the uh the leader type of position so it just reminds me of Gwingolin uh towards um Vinard although Vinard doesn't really need Gwingolin as a uh, paternal thing he he looks up to him as a brilliant advisor and strategist so I'm getting that kind of vibe I don't know if you're getting that vibe but that's the kind of vibe I get when I'm reading the story here so let me know in the comments down below what you think about that so, all right, let's go on ahead here. Let's look at, what's this name? Ang? Is it Ang? Schisler? Let's, let's look at this. Ang? I think that's Ang. Ang? Schisler. Schis, Schisler. Yeah, that'd be, I think that's the right way to say it. Ang Schisler. Okay, so his character voice is Shin Ichiaro. Miki. I think I'm saying that right. I, I don't 
I don't know if I'm, I, <laughs> I don't, I don't really, I don't think I say Japanese names all that accurately, but I know English, <laughs> so I know that, but all right. So apologies if I'm not saying everything 100% here, but um, I'm trying, I'm trying. If you, if, you, if you know how to help me out with that, please uh, leave some comments and all that. Anyways, he is a male, he's 38, he is a knight class. So what we got here, it seems to be that the knight class might be the middle tier, uh, and then above that will be paladin class. And, or knight might turn into avenger class, I don't know. So we'll find out once the game comes out, you know, we'll see about that. So let's go ahead and read it. So Ang Shizzler. That's going to be a name I'm going to have to say a bunch of times before I probably get that right. Because if it was, um, if it was Angus, kind of like a, kind of like a Scottish name or an Irish name, you know, a Gaelic name. If it was Angus, it'd be easy, but Ang is, it just, it's, it's like, it makes me want to think that I want to say Angus, but it's not. <laughs> so anyway, sorry. Let's go. Let's, let's continue here. So Ang Shizzler. All right. So this guy, this eminent rune knight has protected Norzalio alongside Grados and Jew since Rubino III took the throne. As the leading actor for the popular Imperial Theater, Aang's good looks often draw longing glances from the ladies he passes on the street. His beloved wife passed away, giving birth to Elena, but he managed to overcome this grief by raising his daughter with great love. As any loving father would, he worries endlessly about his daughter fighting on the battlefield as a full-fledged rune knight. Okay, so that kind of makes sense. You know, I, I kind of uh, empathize with him on that. Uh, so what is he kind of about? What is he kind of like? Uh, you know, if we're going to make some ties back to the original Brigandine game, which I'm, I just kind of want to. Uh, so I would say that uh, Aang Shizzler which is, that's kind of a, you know, that last name sounds very German. Um, so what I'm going to say this guy's kind of like is I would say he's kind of like a road bull where road bull's looking out for his daughter, but his daughter, you know, is out on the battlefield too. So I would say that that would be a, a very similar comparison. So I would say that some of the characters in here are looking very close to a lot of the Norgardian uh, people that um, I remember and that I do play the older Brigadine game. I, it feels weird to say the older Brigadine game because it was the main Brigadine game for so long, you know, but now I guess that's the way it's going to be. So anyways, um, that is Ang Schisler right there. So he's a knight. He seems like a pretty cool knight. Pretty cool knight. I could you know, kind of resonate with this guy in uh, so many different ways. Um, you know, being a caring for your your children and worrying about them. You know, <laughs> so that sort of thing. But uh, anyways, anyways, so he might be a pretty good knight. He's probably going to be second tier. Uh, he seems kind of like a sort of pseudo road bull position storyline. Uh, let me know what you think down below in the comments. I'd like to know what you have to say about that. All right, so let's move on to uh, Elena Schisler, his daughter here. So let's move on to her. Let's see what let's see what she has to say. Let's see what she has to say for herself here. All right. So okay, I just got to move one thing around. Sorry. Okay, Elena Schisler. Her character voice is Rina Honazumi. Onazumi? Is it Rina Onazumi or Honazumi? I, I'm just spelling this out, you know, the way I can do it. So anyways, all right. <laughs> she's a female. She's age 17. Her initial class is a hunter. So is that going to be the archer class or is that going to be the scout class? I'm guessing she's going to be like a low level scout. I think hunter might be like the scout class from the Brigadine game because 
in a Brigadine game, the original classes to start was a scout class, and then you could upgrade into either lancer class or an archer. So you had two choices to choose from, but then you couldn't go back or forth whenever you chose it. So I'm going to guess that she's the low level uh, scouting class. We'll see when a game comes out. You know, if this is the future and you're coming back and you're like, no, it was this all along. Thank you. Please leave it in the comments down below. I would appreciate knowing uh, from the future <laughs> if, if you're watching this in the future. But right now I'm just guesstimating what this class is right here, this hunter class. So it could be the archer class. It could be the middle tier. But I'm going to go ahead and guess that this is the lower class because she's she's young Kind of like uh, Cortina. I just get this Cortina feel from her right now. This young, this young woman that's coming out and going into battle. And uh, so I'm guessing she's going to start in the lowest class. She'll probably be a project knight, from my guesstimation. And uh, you can probably grow her to be really well, really good. So she might be kind of like a Marriott, or she might be kind of like a Lucia uh, from. Brigandine Grand Edition or Brigandine Legend of Forcina. So she could be kind of like that. You could grow her into a really powerful Artemis or whatever the final tier is going to be. You know, we'll see. But, um, okay, so I talked long enough. Let's go and read our dialogue here. All right. Sorry. I, I, uh, I like to talk <laughs> about the Brigandine game, especially. Okay, so the only daughter of Ang Shizzler. Cheerful and proactive, she understands Prince Rubino very well, having known him since childhood. Her knowledge of his normal, normally pacifist nature allows her to accept his determination when he chooses to join the war. A remarkable rude knight in her own right, she nevertheless exhibits a girlish side when going crazy over sweets. At the age of five, she rescued Pick of the Barrett clan. The fairy now follows Elena everywhere, respectfully addressing her as a princess. Okay, so this Pick, which would be kind of like a pixie. Uh, Pick is also an uh, older northern uh, Gaelic tribe. I think it was um, associate. I think... Uh, Possibly Merlin was associated with the Picts. I think it was P-I-C Picts. Uh, I can't remember how to spell it, but anyways. Uh, so she's the daughter. She's kind of got a wild side. She likes sweets. Uh, she'll do what, you know. Um, she accepts what her father, you know, decides to do because he's normally kind of a peaceful person. And if he decides that they have to go to war, then she thinks that... He knows, he kind of knows what's best. So, you know, she's kind of uh, accepting of her father, and that's a good thing. Um, and uh, she knows Prince Rubino from childhood, so they're childhood friends. And so, you know, she's kind of like, you know, really nice girl. She's a really nice girl. So, all right. So uh, that is Elena Scheisler. Okay, so she is a hunter. I'm going to just go ahead and guess that she's a low-level archer, like a scout class. So let me know what you think in the comments down below. I'm going to go ahead and guess that she's kind of a project knight. She might be really good, kind of like how Marriott starts off kind of low-level, but then she gets so much rune power, and then she gets a pretty decent attack, and she's like really, really good end game. This could kind of be that. This could be that. Um... We'll see. We'll see as the game progresses. So let's go on next character. So next character is Pick. It's this, uh, I guess it's a, it's, I'm going to just go ahead and say it's a pixie. Pick is, seems to be a pixie. <laughs> so the, um, what happens in the game is you, it seems like you lose the, the little pixie monsters and they get replaced with imps. But if she's a pixie, you know, that kind of, at least for me, it kind of makes up for it. It's like, well, you got the pixies in there. So in a way, it's a knight now. So it's not, not quite the same, but it's um, it's there. So that's good. I'm kind of happy with that. All right. So let's, let's go ahead and read some of this here. Okay. So pick, 
Character voice, Aemi Tanaka. Uh, gender male, age 12. Okay, so initial class, Barrett Rookie. So a Barrett Rookie, because the original Burgundine game had an elf had an elf um, race, uh, uh, two different characters, uh, Perinair and um, the other one that uh, is, I think, a brother or a family member of her, but I can't remember his name right now. But you could get um, either one of those two different race classes to use in the game of Grand Edition. And um, well, I think actually Grand Edition allows it. I'm not, I don't remember if Legend of Renarzia lets you get both of them. I'm trying to remember that because they're kind of rare. They're rare pickups. They're rare knights that you can get. Um, it's kind of like getting Atlas um, in the game. So maybe you don't get elves here, but maybe you get a um, pixie class as a, you know, a interesting pickup. So, all right, let's go ahead and read this. All right, so this Barrett clan fairy is devilishly mischievous. Elena rescued her when she was still a baby Barrett. And she has followed Elena around since then, looking up to her as her princess. Never honest with anyone other than Elena. She speaks rudely even to Prince Rubino. For Elena, however, she would willingly sacrifice her own life. Her powers are still weak as she has yet to transform into her adult body. But she excels at providing cover for allies and confusing the enemy as she zips along the battlefield. So uh, a little confusing here. I don't know if they kind of made a mistake here. They say she's a male, but it's constantly saying she here. So, you know, I think it's supposed to be she. You know, I'm just going to go ahead and I don't know what's going on with that. But um, let me know in the comments down below. But either way. They keep using the word she here, so I'm guessing it's a she. And uh, yeah, so she kind of acts like most of the pixie classes probably would. Um, when I watch other stories about fairies and stuff, they seem to be very loyal to one thing. And, kinda, and they're also kind of mischievous too, as far as fairies go. So it would kind of make sense as far as like the way that she's described and how she acts. I would have to guess that, you know, this sounds pretty accurate. So that is pick. I don't know really much about the Barrett rookie class. I'm guessing Barrett rookie means that she is low tier. So she's probably within the first tier, considering the word rookie. Uh, and then she'll evolve into uh, a particular thing. So she could be a special kind of knight like Dinadan was, like Iria was in the Grand Edition version. So she might end up being that special class that you get with um, with this country here, with Nor with the Norzalio kingdom. So I'm going to go ahead and guess that. We'll see in the future how that plays out. Okay, let's move on to the final character in the Norzalio kingdom. All right, Jiu. Is it Jiu or Jiu? Um... Someone please help me out with this one. I, I'm i not sure what to say. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and say you like that. And I hope I'm saying it accurately. All right. So character voice is Masako Katsuki. Gender female, age 65. Initial class saint. Ooh. So she is a saint and... um. What ends up happening is that in the Ascaris Empire, I think she is, um, yeah, yeah, um, Norgard's, or Vinard's sister is in the Saint class to start. So, we get a Saint class in this game here. So, that's pretty cool. The same class is typically Holy Word and um, a couple other interesting things, too. And so it's going to be interesting to see what she will be able to do. Let's read her profile here. 
and see what it's all about, okay? All right, the highest ranked senior priestess of the kingdom who watches over the brigandine of justice. It is said she can hear the voice of the rune god. In battle, her spells are far more powerful than those of regular knights. So she has very high intelligence. Her hobby is coming up with healthy recipes, especially for Prince Rubino. She is constantly trying to convince the reluctant prince to try her unpleasant-looking creations. To the prince, she is an overlying, she is an overly caring old lady, but to everyone else on the continent, she is a noble and powerful mage. So this really says right here, she's kind of like a motherly figure to Prince Rubino. And um, he doesn't really like her co her cooking because it doesn't look good. Um, I don't know how it tastes though. I guess we'll have to see. We'll have to see how it tastes. Uh, but uh, yeah, so she is a very high intelligent saint. So he, apparently this is kind of giving you a little clue to say that, hey, although she is of the healer class, she, her magic is going to be pretty powerful because she's going to have a high intelligence. So it's it's already saying this uh, how many times? All right, how many times does it say it? She can hear the voice of the rune god. That makes her a little more of a theologian in a way. Uh, her spells are far more powerful than those of regular knights. And she's considered a noble and powerful mage. So she has a very high intelligence just from reading this alone. Just to note, just to denote, she's going to be kind of like, I, I don't know if she's going to take the role of uh, Queen Leoness in a sense, but um, she could possibly take the role of um, um, Vinard's sister, you know, uh, that fights for the uh, Iskaris Empire. So it's possible it could be something like that. So I see some characters in here that are kind of like, you know, they're, they're kind of... Um, there, there seem to be a good amount of characters in here that kind of resemble Norgardian characters, but there's a couple that don't. So I would say probably the couple that don't or that I'm having a hard time putting it... Um, I'm, hard, I'm having a hard time drawing a connection. Be probably be Pick and Jewel. So those two characters, they seem like they might have uh, um, their own inspiration um, outside of of a Norgard close semblance. But um, yeah, we'll have to see more of that. And there will definitely be more of the story that will come out when the game comes out and all that. But uh, yeah, today I just wanted to kind of talk about Norzalio Kingdom. This is the Kingdom class. <laughs> this is the Kingdom class cast that will be in the game. And apparently there will be more. So there will be more characters to come. But these will probably be the main knights here that we're going to see. All the other knights that will probably come up will be, um, you know, extra knights that will just kind of be there to have extra knights. They'll have some story to them. We'll have some quest knights that will probably come out here too. But we won't really find out much about that until we get to that timeline to actually see that. So, yeah, that's pretty much uh, Norzalio Kingdom. Up next, I'm going to do a video on... The Republic of Guimol. And uh, then after that, I'll do one of Shinobi Tribe. And then I'll go to this one and then this one and this one. So, you know, when I, when I get more information on it, I'm going to make more videos. So be sure to stay tuned for more videos of this. And you will get all the information you need to know about Brigandine Legend of Renarzia on Channel Veracity Trigger. So thank you for being here. Take care and uh, hope to see you in the next video.